Hello there, this is Shell, and welcome to another VoxFX PSA. Today, I'm going to be reviewing Sonic Charge Sinplant. Say hello, Sinplant. It's pretty cool. So what is Synplant? Well, I mean, it's a synthesizer. Syn, as you might have guessed, but subtractive, FM, additive, I don't actually know. It's got a lot of secrets under its hood. But one thing I do know is that it is fairly unique among synthesizers in that it uses what's known as a genetic algorithm in order to create its sounds. It's weird, it's unpredictable, but I think it's very inspiring. So let's talk a little bit about how it works. So you start with a random seed. Control click to make a new random seed. And then each note corresponds to a sprout. As you can see, there are 12 sprouts. And then you pull on each sprout to make it grow and change the sound of that note. Well, that got interesting. And so you keep doing that until you find a sound you really like. Let's go with. Let's go with that one just because it's weird. And then you can make that the new seed. And then you repeat the process. So we have. And then we can continue to go from there. That one's fun. So let's say I'm going for some sort of weird sound effect. That would do nicely. That's the general gist of the workflow. So some other things is that you can tune it up or down an octave. Change it to something a little bit more normal first. There we go, that's a winner. It can actually get, it can actually get pretty precise. The atonality slider determines how melodic the sound is. More atonal makes it more percussive, noisy, or sequence-like. And then there's the effects slider over here, which adds what they call a chorusing reverb. I currently had it up at maximum, so. And now it's completely off. It gets very interesting. Uh, but yeah, more chorusing reverb makes it more ambient. And the release time, as the name would imply, changes the release time. It also doubles as a gate if you set it to zero. And then it also has a master volume control, and it has this velocity sensitivity and wheel scaling to change how it responds to your MIDI controller. And then if you make a mistake, you can actually go back using this undo redo stack. It actually goes back all the way to the point where, to the point where you first opened the plugin. And you can go forward if you want. Let's go forward a little bit. That's where we left off with the weird. And if you want some more fine grain control over the synth, you can actually manipulate its genes. So as you can see, there's this long list of parameters arranged along this DNA double helix. You can't really make a whole lot of sense out of most of them, so they have this helpful help button. It gives you a, a nice description of each parameter. There are quite a few. I usually don't bother with it, but if I have a sound that is like basically perfect 
and just needs a small tweak, I will use that. It also has a massive list of presets. Let's just grab this one. It says it's rude, so that could be fun. And I wasn't wrong. So let's talk about why I like it. So the interface is fairly simple. There's not a whole lot going on. It's not a massive wall of controls like many soft synths are. It's visually very small. I don't know, for some reason, I like synths that uh, take up a small footprint on your screen. It is very easy to use. You literally just click and drag the plants and the sound changes. But more to the point, it forces you to sound design with your ears. It can be often very tempting to set a synth based off of whether the knobs or the EQ curves look right. I know I've done that several times. But with Synplant, you have no choice. You have to do everything by ear. And so because of the unique genetic algorithm used in the synth, it comes up with sounds that you would have never created otherwise. Who would have thought to come up with that? Some of these sounds just like who would have thought to come up with these sounds? It's ridiculous. And as a result of this sort of almost randomness that comes with it, it can be very inspiring to work with. So let's talk about a few shortcomings. This is a, this is a review after all. So first, it's kind of hard to control. As you can see, there are no, there are no filters, there are no envelopes, LFOs, oscillators, Anything that you would normally see on a synth is either completely absent or buried in the DNA menu. Because of these lack, this lack of parameters, it makes it very hard to control and it can be very unpredictable. Like I said, the, the genetic algorithm is almost kind of random in a sense. There's a lot of trial and error here. And some of the sounds that it makes aren't always usable. Like, they're very niche sounds, and sometimes it even goes to complete silence. It often requires a lot of tweaking to get the sounds into a usable state. And speaking of tweaking, it can take a while to get to a sound that you like. It can, you can almost spend like a good 15 minutes traversing the sounds just to get to one that you would want to use. Another downside is the fact that you can't really replicate a sound once you've gotten it. Because of how random it is, every synplant tone is more or less unique, and you can't really recreate something you made in a previous instance. So you better make sure that you have it recorded, because you, once you close out of it, it's basically gone. And last, it's not a really good first synth because, as I mentioned, there are no filters, there are no oscillators, there are no envelopes, there are no LFOs, at least none that you can immediately see. Because it doesn't have those things, it doesn't teach you anything that can be applied to other synths. It's very much its sort of own ecosystem, whereas, like, say, most other synths have very obvious controls that are somewhat the same across all of them. But that all being said, I think it's a fun synth, and it can be very effective in the right circumstances. Here's some suggestions for getting the best sound out of it. First and foremost, don't go into it with any sort of plan. Just kind of let it take you on a journey to get a cool sound. It's like you're wandering through the woods to find the sound you want. Another thing is this ring control that you may have seen me messing with before. Use that to grow all the sprouts at once rather than just one at a time. I actually have it mapped to the mod wheel of my keyboard so that I can change this with one hand and play with the other. Another thing you may have noticed, you definitely want to grow broad first, growing the plants along. That way you can get a, a nice diversity of sounds. And then once you've found one you like, use small changes to get the rest of the way there. So basically, start big and kind of narrow your way down, kind of an iterative design process. Another thing, take your time. I was kind of rushing there, so that's not ideal but definitely take your time with it. Listen carefully to each sound as you go. Each sprout changes a lot from short to medium to long. And then you can clone a sprout that you really like to all the notes so that it plays the same tones for all the notes. So say, let's say I really like that one. And now it's the same for all of them. Another thing, grow all the sprouts out just a little bit. 
like about that far. So that when you play the notes, each one is a little bit different, which makes the performance more dynamic, so. As you can hear, they're all completely different. So if I were to play a melody. Then each note sounds a little bit different, which makes it a lot more dynamic sounding. And last, you definitely want to mess around with automating the sprout's growth over time, which makes the sound morph and change in strange ways. That one sounds cool. And to show you what Sinplant is really capable of, I'm going to show you a song made entirely with Sinplant. I give you The Sprout. So that's Sinplant. If you're interested in getting it, I've linked it in the description. It's $100, which is actually pretty cheap for a software synth. Like Massive goes for $200 and Serum goes for $190, so relatively cheap. It also has a seven day free trial and is fully functional during the trial period. But after your trial expires, the seed actually withers and shrivels up, rendering the synth inactive. And you have to buy the product to bring it back to life. And just so you know, I am not being sponsored sponsored by Sonic Charge. I just think this is a really cool and imaginative synth and I want more people to know about it. So what do you guys think of Synplant? Is this something you'd want to use in your music? What kind of songs would you make with it? Or is it not really your thing? Let me know in the comments. And if this is your first time here and you want to see more, please subscribe. I make a new video every Thursday to give you the tools and inspiration you need to make great audio. Anyway, until next time, have fun and keep making sound.